go ahead and get started. Welcome to Last Minute Tips for Giving Tuesday 2024. I'm really excited to be chatting with you guys about Giving Tuesday and what last minute things you can get done before the big day. My name is Lisa Galperin. I'm the Marty Marketing and Communications Manager here at Mighty Cause. Before we jump into some last minute tips, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things and just a review of Mighty Cause's Giving Tuesday event. Um, this webinar is being recorded and we will provide a recording and the slide deck in a follow-up email and will be sent out sometime tomorrow. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, taking down notes on the slide deck. We'll send that over to you. Um, but if you have any questions throughout the webinar, um, there is a Q&A tool uh, and that's the easiest way for me to see questions that come in through uh, throughout this webinar. I'll try to stop periodically, but there is time at the end for any questions. Um, I will try my best to go through the chat for questions, but sometimes they do get lost there. So the questions tool is just the easiest way for me to see questions immediately. So just a little bit about Mighty Cause. Um, if you've joined our webinar uh, a webinar of ours before, um, then you're familiar with us. If not, um, we've been in the nonprofit space since 2006. We're one of the biggest technology providers for giving days across the country. So if you participate, I see some California organizations and Big Day of Giving or uh, Colorado Gives, Georgia Gives, etc. We provide the technology for those large giving days. Outside of that, we're a year-round fundraising platform for nonprofits. Um, so we offer lots of different tools and features that nonprofits can utilize year-round uh, for their fundraising outside of Giving Tuesday. So you can utilize this for Giving Tuesday or you can utilize this year-round. And we'll talk about some of these tools and features that we have on the platform that you can utilize for Giving Tuesday. So as I mentioned, just a brief overview of our Giving Tuesday event. Um, so if you are not participating with one of our technology, our, our Giving Day partners, such as Colorado Gives um, or Georgia Gives, um, you are welcome to participate in our giving event. Um, giving Tuesday is Tuesday, December 3rd this year. Um, our registration is currently open. It's completely free to join um, an our event. Uh, our early giving when donors can start giving starts November 19th and goes until Giving Tuesday. So by registering for our event, um, you'll be part of our large giving day event where we provide free resources, a toolkit um, with graphics, um, guides, checklist, etc. Um, you'll also be eligible for our prize pool, which I'll talk about in just a second. So if you're interested in registering, you can just go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com and you'll see the registration button right at the top. And then just a pro tip, there are two steps to the registration process. So you'll submit the form there and then there is a to-do list on your org page. Um, so the to-do list is really just a couple of basic things. It should take you a couple of minutes just to get your page set up. So adding a logo, Added a adding a banner image, really easy, simple things to do. So once you complete those two things, you'll get auto approved and then you'll receive an approval email. Some important dates just to be aware of around Giving Tuesday. So one, our early giving starts November 19th. So that's when donors can start donating on the platform and have it count towards any of our prizes or prize pools and totals. November 26th is our registration close date. So you wanna make sure if you're not registered that you register by then. And then um, Tuesday, uh, December 3rd is the big day. We also have additional features and tools available for those who you know, want to um, upgrade their fundraising this year. So we our Accelerate plan has uh, different features such as our integrations tool, text to give, our supporter CRM system, our embeddable donation form. Um, so it encompasses a little bit more than what just our standard platform is. Um, all right, so just a quick overview of our prize breakdown uh, because we just, we uh, sent out, you should have received a notification email about our prizes last week, I believe. Uh, but just a quick breakdown because this will help in terms of when you're thinking about your campaign in the last couple of weeks, what you have to do. So for this year, we have over 40 chances for nonprofits to win. Um, 
So the first type of prize we have are our leaderboard prizes. So those are broken down to most dollars raised and unique donors. So for, um, we have uh, four different categories for most dollars raised. We have small, medium, large, and new organizations. Um, so you can see the budget size that would qualify for uh, your size, um, and that's based off your registration answers. And for new organizations, you would qualify as a new organization if you haven't participated in Giving Tuesday within the last two years on Mighty Cause. Um, so the most dollars raised, the top five organizations, they're going to receive a $250 boost. And for unique donor prize, um, that uh um, that group will win a um, also a boost of $250. Our Power Hour are uh, basically small fundraising sprints throughout the day. Um, and this is used for you guys to kind of create communication and encourage donors to give during that time. So you'll see the time breakdown here. Um, so for example, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's a time where you can reach out to your donor base and say, hey, there's a power hour going on. We want to make sure we, you know, win this power hour. Can you help us do that? Um, so uh, that will, uh, there are six chances, chances to win the power hour and all nonprofit organizations are eligible to compete in the power hour. All right, we also have um, the early giving and recurring giving uh, prize. So the early giving um, is given to most unique donors and most dollars raised during our early giving period. So outside of Giving Tuesday, and then our recurring giving prize is for uh, organization within each segment that receives the most recurring donation, um, new recurring donations from early giving and Giving Tuesday. Throughout the day, we also will uh, will also give out random golden tickets. So these are randomly selected donations, and the donation that's selected, that organization will receive a hundred dollar boost. So you can see that time frame of when those um, random picks will be drawn. We also are giving subscription giveaways. So uh, we have three different um, challenges for our subscription giveaways. So for the Meet Your Match Challenge, um, two registered organizations that post and meet a matching grant of at least $1,000 are going to win a full year of our Accelerate subscription, uh, which I talked about a little bit about earlier. Um, the Amplify Your Fundraising Challenge, so all participating nonprofits that raise over $1,000 online, they're going to be entered to a prize pool, and then five nonprofits are going to be randomly selected, and they will also win a year of our Accelerate six subscription. And then our Peer-to-Peer -peer Fundraising Challenge, so any nonprofit that has at least one Peer-to-Peer -peer Challenge that raises over $500 for Giving Tuesday, they're going to be entered also into a prize pool, and then two nonprofits are going to be randomly selected. Lastly, we do have a subscriber prize pool as well. So this is for all of our Accelerate subscribers. So we also have a power hour, early giving, recurring giving, and a golden ticket opportunity as well. So we've kind of created a prize pool where there's ample opportunity for nonprofits to win, for you to utilize this in your communication, and to motivate donors for your organization to make their gifts. All right, well, now that we've talked about prizes and our registration, let's get into our last minute tips. So here's a brief breakdown of the tips that we're going to go through. So reviewing your fundraising page, customizing your checkout, scheduling your communication, and making a follow-up plan. So let's talk about reviewing your fundraising page. So when you're thinking about your Giving Tuesday campaign, you want to first think about your goal. If you haven't figured out your goal yet, do so, because that's always the first step of any campaign. So what is the donation that you're trying to raise money for? And what are you trying to raise money for or your organization? What, what are you trying to raise for? Are you trying to purchase a certain amount of backpacks? Are you trying to make sure that you have a program that can continue throughout the year? What is that goal? And is it clear and articulated, right? Do you have, have you put into a sentence what your goal is and how much you're raising funds for? On your Mighty Cause page, you're going to want to make sure that your goal is also listed there. You can edit your goal if you've had a goal there previously. 
And you can also update your metrics. So on your Mighty Cause page, your fundraising thermometer is counting donations based off the date that is set there. So if you want it to show the full year, count all donations you received on the platform for the full year, you can do so. Or you can edit it so it only shows donations from early giving and then onward. Um, so that way that donors can see exactly what is, you know, how much you've raised based off early giving and counting towards prizes. Next, you want to make sure that you are looking at your organization profile about section. This is going to be the main link that you share. So you're going, this is going to be the link that you're going to copy and paste and send to your donors. Um, so look over if you have content there already, look over and see what needs to be outdated. Do you have outdated dates on there? Do you have outdated language? Are things no longer relevant to your organization? Um, you want to upload photos and videos that are relevant for this year. I would look for two to three key images that you can utilize. And I think that's helpful because not only can you add this to your campaign page, but this is going to be images that you can utilize on social media, in your emails, et cetera. If you have two to three set images that you can utilize that encapsulate your um, campaign, um, that's going to be helpful in terms of communicating that. Um, and as well, you want to make sure that you're including your key message. So again, if you haven't really planned out your Giving Tuesday campaign, you also want to start out, what exactly are you trying to get across this Giving Tuesday? And if you haven't defined that, um, you want to think about what you're achieving and why. Um, so this mes message should speak to your mission, to your core values, and it should communicate why your current campaign is important. And I think it's always helpful to also include specific facts, any figures, any statistics, include what you've accomplished this past year and what you're looking to do in the new year, what you're looking to do with funds. Again, if you're very clear and specific, that's going to, and, and short, that's going to be the most powerful. So I've just created an example one for my food pantry. So this year we provided over 100,000 meals to families in need. We are raising $20,000 so we can expand our food pantry service and feed even more people in our community. We want to provide 200,000 meals in 2025, and this campaign will help will help us set up to do that. Super short, clear, it kind of talks about what we've done this past year, what our organization does, right? We provide families in our community. We're looking to expand that, what our goal is, and what our goal is for next year. So I would think in kind of those two to three key messages of exactly what you're trying to achieve and why. So in addition to your organization profile, um, on your organization page, I've talked a little bit about this when talking about the registration process, but you also have a to-do list. And this can be a helpful guide into making sure that you're covering everything related to your Mighty Cause page or your giving page. Um, on the platform. And so the to-do list will show you what's required, but also recommended aspects to fill out if you're not sure what else to focus on or work on. And we'll talk a little bit about some of those to-do lists. So if you have received a match or you're in the talks of receiving a match, you want to make sure that you are adding that match and you're prepared to also talk about that match. So if for those of that, for you who are not familiar with matches, matches, especially on giving days, are great um, ways to incentivize giving. So it acts as a buy one, get one free. It's a way to inspire and again, incentivize donors to give on that day. Um, obviously, the, you know, asking people to donate can be powerful. But if you say, hey, your donation is doubled today if you give, that's an even bigger incentive for a donor to give, not just in general, but also on this day, or even to make a larger amount. You know, maybe I was preparing to make a $5 donation, but oh, knowing my donation is going to be matched, I'll make a $20 donation because that's essentially a $40 donation. Um, if you do have a match or you're in the talks of receiving a match, you want to add it to the platform through our matching grants tool. Our matching grants tool 
you can add a match. And then when that match is live, it will be added to your profile. So donors will be able to see when you have an active match. So you can do that on the platform by going to your fundraising tool section and matching grants, and then you can click create. On your matching grant, you'll be asked to add details such as a logo, match value, uh, the date and time of when you want it to start and end. And we have different matches available. So we have, you can set up a match where it's based off a percentage. So most commonly one-to-one. -one. You can also set up a match based off most unique donors. Um, and where this is helpful is if you are trying to win one of these prizes of most unique donors, setting up a match that is based off donors can help facilitate that win. Um, If your organization is planning on having uh, individuals fundraise for your organization, so peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, you wanna make sure that you have a template ready for um, people to join in and fundraise. So maybe you were looking to have your board members be more involved or create their own fundraising page to create more engagement. Um, the fundraising template on your dashboard, you can fill out basically key information about uh, for a fundraiser, so like the image, the the text, you know, things that may make may make it longer for someone to set up and do, you can do that for them, and so that their page is all ready to go. Um, and then once you complete this template, you can send them the link, and all of this will be pre-filled for them. So it makes it super easy and quick for them to start fundraising. So again, if you have if you're having some advocates, ambassadors, or board members that are planning to fundraise, definitely recommend creating a template um, and that will make the process faster. In your Mighty Cause dashboard, you also want to make sure you're reviewing your settings. So is everyone on your team that needs access to your page, do they have access? Um, do they have the ability to manage your page and make edits, etc.? If not, you want to make sure that you're going to your settings and you're adding them as an administrator. Or if you see any old previous administrators, you're removing them as well. Within your settings, um, within general settings, there's also um, a section called social share settings. So this is basically when your link is shared on Facebook or on, on Twitter, what it looks like. Um, you want to just review that and make sure that's updated. If there's any outdated language or if you want to customize it for Giving Tuesday, that that is updated and customized based off what you need. And then lastly, is your EFT set up? So do you have direct deposit set up? Um, is it approved? Is everything all good on that? And I just always recommend double checking and triple checking that that is all good and set up. And lastly, um, kind of to round out, just reviewing your page and reviewing all of that is accessing your donor retention report. So if you use a platform this past year or last year, this tool is going to be really helpful in figuring out who you should contact this year for your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, because your retention report will list out all of the donors that you ha have and have not retained either this year or if you wanna compare it to last Giving Tuesday. Um, so you can actually filter if you've participated last year, you could filter Giving Tuesday 2024 and it will show you that list of donors that you should reach out to that have not made a donation yet for your Giving Tuesday campaign. If you're brand new to the platform, this is something just, again, to make note of that you can utilize moving forward or next year, it will be at your disposal um, where you can keep track of all of those donors who you haven't retained yet this past year. All right, I'm gonna pause before we get into the next session of customizing your checkout um, and just double checking questions. How do we add a thermometer to our fundraiser? Um, great question. So if you, on your organization profile, and I can go back to that page quickly, on your organization profile, if you don't have it enabled, you'll see a plus button in that section and you want to make sure you're logged in as an administrator. Um, once you see like a plus button, you can enable that and that will add the thermometer. Um, on a fundraiser page, like in a separate, if you have created a campaign or a fundraising page separately, it'll automatically have that on there. 
Um, but that's how you would enable it on an organization profile. What platform are people using to help you fundraise? Uh, so um, for our Giving Tuesday event, you could utilize Mighty Cause. Um, but otherwise, you know, for Giving Tuesday, it's a global day of giving. So you can utilize, you know, whatever platform or your own website if, if you want to. Um, okay, I am going to continue to the next section. All right, customizing your checkout flow. All right, so after you've kind of done general review of your about section, you've added all of that information, um, you want to then make sure that you are reviewing your checkout flow. So what donors are going to see when they are making a donation to your organization. So one thing I always recommend are introducing donation tiers. I think this is a great way to highlight the impact a donor can make, make. It can really articulate what exactly they are accomplishing and what you're trying to um, you know, accomplish for your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, so in this example, you see, you know, $1,000 per supplies groceries for one month, uh, $500 feeds two families for a week, $100 supports three uh, meals daily for a week, $25 provides a, a day's worth of meals. Um, so in terms for a donor, right, it's telling them exactly what they're kind of getting from the donation or the impact they're making, but it also can incentivize giving in larger amounts, right? If I was... Uh, planning on just giving $5 and I come here and I see, oh, well, just for $25, it actually provides a day's worth of meal. Oh, okay. What well, I'll, I'll make a $25 donation because, you know, it actually makes a day's worth of meal, right? So that's the impact that being super clear about how, what dollars can do to impact your organization. Um, you can also as well create recognitions if you're trying to push um, recurring giving. So you could create um, different names in terms of superstar, hero, champion, ambassador. Um, so this is an example here. We have $10 a month, an ideal monthly recurring donation. Thank you. $50 a month, fund a student to attend wingman workshop. Um, $100 a month, train a student to be a wingman leader. And $500 a month, train a wingman trainer for a school district. So then again, super specific and straight to the point in terms of what an, a donor is going to be contributing to your organization. So when, you all, when you're looking at your checkout flow, in addition to your donation tiers, you wanna think about, are you collecting all of the data that you need? Um, so on the platform, you can add additional questions that you want. So you'll be able to add up to two. If you have our accelerate plan, you can add more than two. But are you collecting, you know, what you need from donors? Maybe you want to see if they're interested in volunteer opportunities. You can ask that question. If you want to collect phone numbers, you can additionally add that question. Um, if you want to, you know, ask, you know, what their demographics are, or you want to see what programs they're most interested in from your organization. I mean, the list goes on and on. You want to think about what's going to be most useful for your organization moving forward in the um, new year. Maybe you don't need to add any other questions, but something just to think about if there's anything useful. Um, on the platform, you can also choose for it to be required or not required in order, in order to make a gift. So you could add a question there and have it not be required to see, you know, based off that, you know, um, based off the answers you do receive, um, you know, that could be helpful information as well. So one of the uh, steps on your to-do list is your thank you page. And your thank you page is the page that pops up right after a donation is processed, right? It's once the donation goes through, it's going to say, Thank you for making your gift. Um, and in this area, you can actually customize the language. Um, you can add photos, you can add a video, you can add a call to action. So if you want to direct people to a certain area of your website, if you want to, again, have your own personal language, um, you can do so in the thank you page. And it's going to be the first thing they see once they um, complete their donation. 
as well after a donation is processed, they're going to receive um, an email, they're gonna be emailed a receipt. Um, so if you are participating in our Giving Tuesday event, all donations on Mighty Cause, they're processed through a donor advised fund. So for a Giving Tuesday event, they're processed through Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation. Um, so that's a donor advised fund, which means that donations are immediately tax deductible and we handle the tax receipts. Um, so a tax receipt is immediately sent off to the donor. Um, but what you can do is you can add your own personalized language to the tax receipt. So if you want to add, you know, special language, again, you want to direct them to a certain area of your website, et cetera. You want to control that communication. You can, um, in, on your dashboard in your checkout flow section, add that language, preview what that receipt looks like um, so that, uh, you know, you can see what donors are receiving. All right. I think we have a couple more questions. I'm going to pause there. See, um, we are using the Washington Gives as our platform. Are we eligible for prizes? Yeah. So if you are participating in another giving event, um, then this was the prize pool is just for organizations that are participating in our Giving Tuesday event. If you are participating in another Giving Tuesday event that uses Mighty Cause technology, um, they it would be related to any prizes that they have available on their plot on their site, etc. Um, if someone is making one time donation, is there a way to prompt them to make a monthly donation? Explain what the additional commitment would be. Um, that's a great question and an interesting idea. We don't have that at the moment, but I think that's a really interesting idea and like. I'll definitely provide that feedback. But at this time, there isn't a way that it would create an additional prompt for um, for donors. But in terms of communication, which we'll talk about, there may be something that you want to think about with your follow-up communication of um, for your end of year campaign, potentially of uh, having that language of what a monthly donation could help your nonprofit with. So... When we're talking about communication for Giving Tuesday, um, if you are looking just for what do I need to send out for Giving Tuesday, um, these are really, I think, some important dates that you can complete in terms of for emails. So November 19th, when our early giving starts, that's a good time to reach out to donors, notify them, let them know that you're participating in Giving Tuesday campaign. They can donate now. One week away, Letting them know it's one week away, they can give, it will count towards prizes if you're, you know, trying to win one of our early giving prizes, etc. Um, that's additional communication you can send out one day before, tomorrow is the big day. Um, you know, again, call to action with um, the prizes we have. If you have a match, reinforcing your goal, a Giving Tuesday one, and then a follow-up a, a day after of like a thank you day. Um, you want to, I think with the Giving Tuesday email, again, kind of making sure, articulating today is the day, um, reinforcing that kind of urgency. So when, in terms of the actual content for your email, we do have uh, an email templates that you can utilize in our toolkit. But outside of that, um, you want to use clear and strong language. So I always recommend following the classic storytelling arc challenge, solution, impact, call to action. And we talked a little bit about this with our key messaging. What's the challenge that your community is facing? What's the solution? What's the impact you're providing? And what's the call to action? And we also talked about a bit, you know, incorporating your stats and figures and statistics. What exactly have you accomplished last year? What are you trying to accomplish next year? And as, as well, what we just what I just mentioned is you want to use urgent urgency. Of course, you want to be uh, um, use it sparingly because not all of your emails should be an urgent call to action. But help us reach our goal before midnight is a great you know Giving Tuesday email subject line or um, communication you can do to really drive the urgency of Giving Tuesday. Again, you want to think of Giving Tuesday. I mean, Giving Tuesday was created as a call to action in itself from all of the other days surrounding Thanksgiving, Cyber Monday, um, Black Friday, right? 
Those are, hey, today is the day to purchase X, Y, and Z because it's going to be, you know, the biggest sale that you've ever seen. Same thing with Giving Tuesday in terms of nonprofits. Today is the day to give because we're trying to reach our goal of $20,000. We're trying to win this prize. Um, you know, we want to make sure that next year we have X, Y, and Z. So having that urgency and, and reinforcing that, like today is the day to give. Um, Um, and when you're talking about thinking about your email, um, emails that you're sending out, you want to think about what exactly, who are the people that you're sending that out to? And you do want to consider what are some of the segments of people that you want to reach out to. Um, some of your emails are going to be kind of general emails that you send out to everyone, but you also want to think about what are the key segments of people. Maybe we want to send out special one-off emails. So here are a couple of key segments to think about in terms of who you may want to specifically reach out to. So your, your 2023 key, um, Giving Tuesday donors. Those are donors you can get from your retention report if you want to. Um, but who are those people that gave last year? Um, you can reach out to them and let them know what happened with their gift, right? This is, we were able to, with your gift, because of you, we were able to do X, Y, and Z. This year, we're looking to double that, et cetera, with your help. Um, any major donors that you have throughout the year, again, clarifying what exactly you're trying to accomplish. And this is why I always talk about that the goal setting and that key messaging is so helpful right in the beginning because it really helps in terms of when you're doing this reach out, you already know the messaging that you're going to send out. You already know, here's a goal. This is why we're accomplishing it. Here are our plans for 2025. Here's how you can help. Um, any unretained donors from 2023, right? So how who gave last year that you haven't received, who haven't come back this year? Um, any volunteers or donors in danger of churning? Um, these are just a couple of groups of people that you really want to consider. Um, and when you're thinking about, I talked a little bit about this re retention, you want to reinforce the importance of their support um, and put any beneficiaries front and center. So you include the impact data that really speaks to what your the donations accomplished. So your $50 donation helped us provide 10 school lunch meals to children in need this past year. With, the, with your help last year, we were able to provide 1,000, 10,000 lunch meals to students in need. Um, and maybe it's a program that they're helping sustain. Um, you know, your, your $50 last year helped us continue our program, which does X, Y, and Z. This year, in order for us to continue the program or for us to expand the program, we're looking to raise a you know, certain amount of dollars. So as I mentioned, we do have email templates available. Um, so if you do need any email templates, you can utilize our uh, templates and e best practices um, to utilize or get some ideas going for any email communication for this year. So if you do utilize MailChimp, um, our Accelerate uh our Accelerate plan does have a direct integration with MailChimp, and this can be really helpful for your follow-up communication, um, for moving forward, because it automatically syncs your MailChimp contacts with Mighty Cause. So once you receive donations, you can add those, it'll automatically add those contacts to a MailChimp audience. In addition to MailChimp, we also have um, an integration with Zapier. So if you do utilize another um, email marketing system or another CRM system, um, if it is listed on Zapier, we can create a connection where it automates any donations you receive on Mighty Cause will be sent over to your CRM system or your other uh, email marketing system. All right, and when you're thinking about social media, so in addition to you know those four emails that you have a minimally planned within the next couple of weeks for Giving Tuesday, you want to also plan out a couple of social media posts in addition that you can pre-schedule out um, using, you know, a system like Buffer. Um, Buffer.com is a free 
website that you can utilize. You can set up an account. You can add up to three social platforms and you can schedule out posts. Um, so you can do that right now as you have, or, you know, before Giving Tuesday. Um, and you want to plan out, right, some not only content, but also if there's anything throughout the day that you want to celebrate milestones, if there's a certain goal that you have or a match that you have, if you've won a prize or you're trying to um, receive a prize, you want to thank donors. Those are the type of posts that you want to consider posting about um, to let people, again, kind of notice and be engaged with your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, and I've always talked about, we have a communications webinar that you can check out that goes into more detail about um, email and social media, but I always recommend to stick with the platforms that you've used before and that you've seen success with, right? If your donors are not on Twitter, you don't have to use Twitter. If your donors are on Facebook, if they're on Instagram, right, you want to think smarter, not harder, and utilize the time that you have smartly. Um, so stick with the platforms that you know. And again, that those images, those two to three images that you've used on your campaign page, you can recycle those for your social media. So you're not having to create all of this new content, right? You can recycle those images that you've used in your email, on your campaign page, and you can utilize that on social media. Also, you want to make sure that you're joining the conversation and you are utilizing the hashtag Hashtag Giving Tuesday. Um, that's part of, I think, the great thing about Giving Tuesday. It is such a global day of giving. And I think if you haven't checked out the hashtag on Giving Tuesday, definitely recommend to because um, it is really encouraging and awesome to see so many organizations that are participating. Um, it's If you tag Mighty Cause as well, we'll be resharing um, any organization that tags us or hashtags us on um, their Giving Tuesday campaigns. Um, Video is also, I think, in general, a pretty strong um, social content piece to add. It's not required, but definitely in platforms like Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, or TikTok, video is definitely priori uh, prioritized at times. Um, with our communications webinar, if you want more details about or examples about different video um, Giving Tuesday campaigns, um, definitely check out that webinar. I show a couple of different um, great video examples of what are good uh, video campaigns for social media. Um, and then lastly, when it comes to social posts, I would definitely consider doing a boosted Facebook or Instagram post. Um, if you are have never done any Facebook or Instagram ads, Instagram ads, I think this is a, a good opportunity to kind of dip your toes into paid um, social ads. Um, so by boosting a post, when you're paying for a post to be boosted, um, you're essentially paying for that post to be viewed by more people on the platform. Um, because just because you post something doesn't mean, you know, a certain amount of people or all, all of your followers will see it. Um, and you can choose, you know, you can set aside a budget of $20 if you want, just to experiment and see. And you can choose when you do boost your post of the type of audience that you want your post to be shown to. Um, so definitely, I would, you know, encourage you to check it out. I include a hyperlink um, in the slide deck you can utilize where it includes more information about boosted posts, but something to consider to um, include in your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, in addition, with email and social media, um, one thing to also consider is using referral codes. Referral codes are a great way to track um, what, you know, where are you getting the most bang for your buck? Um, so when you are sharing your URL, your Mighty Cause URL, you can add this referral code at the end and then add whatever source or code you want. So for example, if I want to track Facebook, I could do add question mark referral underscore code equals and then Facebook 24, GT 24, Facebook 24. You can add whatever, you know, text you want after the equals, um, as long as you know what that stands for. And so this way, when you are sharing on Facebook, on Instagram, in an email, um, if you want another way to track exactly, well, how many donations actually came from this Facebook post? 
how many donations actually came from this email we sent out. That's a different way, or it's another way where you can track exactly how uh, effective all of these communications that you're sending out are. When you do send out these referral codes, where you can actually see this um, information, if you actually do get received donations from it in your donations report. So when you download a list of your donations, um, your donations report, there's gonna be a column added and it will have the referral codes. So you can see, okay, this person, they made their gift through our, you know, our day of email. They, this person gave their donation through Facebook. So again, they have to use the link, the referral code link in order for that to be tracked. But that is one way, again, when you're thinking about also for next year, moving forward, part of that like goal setting in the beginning for this year is looking at what happened last year, what you're trying to accomplish and having, setting yourself up for success is going to be helpful for moving forward, not only for next Giving Tuesday, but in general for 2025. So I talked a little bit about Buffer, which is a free social media schedule and planner, but here are a couple other free tools that you can utilize for your Giving Tuesday campaign. So of course, Canva, if you don't have a free Canva, or if you don't have a Canva account, you should. It's free for nonprofits. Um, and there are so many templates you can utilize um, to for your social media posts, for email banners, et cetera. We also have a toolkit where we have um, templates and graphics that are our own like template Canva templates that you can use and plug in your logos. Um, and that's done for you. Don't really have to think about it. You just plug in your logo and that's done. And then we have guides as well. If you're new to social media or email or marketing in general, that will kind of talk you through um, giving Tuesday marketing. Um, Linktree um, is ideal for uh, like oh, Twitter or your Instagram bio. And they will consolidate all of your links um, into yeah directory of book more links. Unsplash is a really great royalty free stock photos. So if you you know want to have some photos that are you know more royalty free <laughs> look, you can access those through Unsplash. But you know again, your photos don't have to be professional looking. They can really just have to make sure that they show your organization, right? Like the impact that you guys do. Um, if you do want to you make videos, CapCut is probably the most popular editing, um, free editing system that people on TikTok or Instagram will utilize. Um, it's really easy. You can download it on your phone or you can utilize it on your desktop, but your phone is probably the easiest. Um, so if you do want to add um, you know, if you want to get a little fancy, make a little edits, you know, play around, CapCut is a really great way to make those edits. Or if you were directly just plugging into Instagram or TikTok, that works it's, um, as well. Uh, and just a recap of our marketing resources. So we have, as I mentioned, a social media guide, tips, toolkit, um, an ebook, graphics, and templates. I'm just gonna pause for questions. Um, I noticed our feature campaigns from our regular page are on the Giving Tuesday page. If a donor select those and donate, will they contribute to our Giving Tuesday stats or should we disable those for a Giving Tuesday campaign? Um, I wouldn't disable those. So for, in terms of prizes and leaderboards for our Giving Tuesday event, any donation you receive on the platform will count. Um, so it doesn't have to be to a, sp a specific campaign. Um, so it will count. It's really, you know, how many donations your organization has received in total. So you could also have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages, as I talked about. If your board members have peer-to-peer -peer pages, that total in general will count towards the prizes and leaderboards. Um, if you don't want it shown for whatever reason on your Giving Tuesday page, because you don't want people to give to that, maybe you're raising money for a specific program specifically, and you don't want people to donate to another program, I'm not sure the details, you can disable it, but otherwise you don't have to, like people can still donate to any other campaigns, um, and it'll just go to your general total, and that's perfectly fine and um, 
again, that's a way for if you do have a camp page for a different program, that's a great way for people to give to those programs, right? Um, okay, I don't see any other questions. All right, so let's talk about your follow-up plan. Um, so as you're thinking about Giving Tuesday and the steps that you need to take to get your campaign all together, make your last minute edits, etc. It's also good to take a minute to think about what your follow-up plan is. And maybe this you think about this towards the end of Giving Tuesday. But again, this is something that I think is really important to think about and decide what your plan is. So when you are um, planning your follow-up, you want to make sure that you are planning to thank your donors with you know, not only a message of gratitude, but acknowledging their contribution and what their donation is going to do for your organization in the new year. So this could mean sending an email, right? So I definitely recommend sending a post giving email to share what you've raised so far, um, you know, what you plan on doing with those funds. Even if you didn't technically reach your goal, I mean, saying that, hey, we were able to raise this amount of money and with this, we're able to do X, Y, and Z. Um, or this could be, you know, if you didn't reach your goal, this could be a helpful start to a year-end campaign, right? Our goal by the end of the year is to reach $20,000. You know, on Giving Tuesday, we were able to raise this. Help us, you know, reach this last bit by the end of the year. Um, giving a phone call, right? So if there's volunteers or anyone who's volunteered their time, board members, maybe there's major donors. Um, I think that's where also a letter, um, especially for major donors or donors who have given a larger amount, I think writing um, a handwritten letter and sending that a thank you note is really personal and I think impactful. Um, and those can be kind of divvied up with your team. Um, I volunteered with an organization, um, that's all volunteer run organization. And that's what we did. We kind of created a list and we divided it up amongst everyone, you know, a certain set of people wrote this many, this letter to this person, this letter to this person. Um, and that was a quick way we were able to send out those, um, personal letters. And then of course, social media. So again, continuing that conversation from email of sharing those compliments and sharing, um, you know, what the impact that someone's going to make. This is also the process for stewarding new donors. So you want to consider if you don't have one already, but welcoming new donors with an onboarding welcome journey. So your welcome journey, it's going to be the best time to start engaging new donors and it should be sent within the first two days. It's kind of a welcome to your nonprofit. Um, so it can be a series of emails, phone calls, a welcome packet um, that really starts off the relationship of your nonprofit. Um, and as well, you wanna think about your follow-up as the story's not ending here, right? It's kind of almost just beginning um, because you wanna think about in the new year, how you're going to continue com the conversation with what you've raised and the accomplishments and what you've done with that. Um, my colleague, Josh, if you were on our last webinar, um, I think he always says, and I do think it's true, is that someone once told him this, is that donors always have the mindset that they're doing the changing and you're just a vehicle to facilitate that. And I think that's the right mindset to have when you are sending out follow-up emails and when you are communicating with donors of what their donor did, right? It's you were, because of you, we've been able to do this. This is what your organ, this is what your gift has done, you know, in three months, in six months, you know, this is what we're able to accomplish, et cetera. All right. So we're kind of at the end of our webinar. So in summary, what are, um, you know, the, uh, oops, what are, what's going to be the most important thing that uh, you can at least do, you know, if you have one week, two weeks out, what's the most important thing for you to do? So 
you want to review your existing page and double check that it's not outdated. You don't have outdated information on there, um, that it's up to date and it specifies your key message, right? What you're trying to raise, raise what you're trying to accomplish and also maybe what you have previously accomplished. You want to schedule one to two social media posts with a link to your donation page um, for Tuesday, December 3rd. You want to plan one to two email blasts to your donors announcing um, your Giving Tuesday campaign um, and planning one for at least um, December 3rd. So those are the three things that you can at least do to fundraise for Giving Tuesday. So a couple of resources available to you. Um, I talked about the toolkit a lot. All of our webinars, our Giving Tuesday webinars are provided there. Um, you can download a checklist for success, our graphics, templates, guides. We have three eBooks as well that are all Giving Tuesday related and more. Um, so feel free to check out the toolkit and utilize that for your campaign. We do have um, our last webinar of the year. So it's from first gift to lasting impact, retain your donors, ignite year end fundraising. So this is also kind of a last minute year end fundraising webinar. So if you're late to creating a year end fundraising campaign, um, you know, looking to reach your year end fundraising goals, um, that will be on Thursday, December 12th. All right, so I will leave the last couple of minutes to any questions. So, um, will this recording, will this webinar be recorded with slides? Yes. So we'll send out this webinar in an email, and you'll have the recording and you'll have slide a deck, and it will also be added to the toolkit. Is it possible to have supporters send out the email, giving Tuesday pitch to their own email list? Yeah, definitely. I think that's a great way. I mean, that's a form of peer to peer fundraising. Um, I've told this story before if you've been on a webinar, so apologize for those who've already heard the story. Um, but I, my sister in, had a friend from graduate school, um, who she had found out had started a brand new nonprofit and, um, she had asked my sister, Hey, can you send out this email to, you know, your friends, your family, coworkers, et cetera. And my sister told me, she's like, hey, my friend started this nonprofit. I'm just going to send you over an email and check it out. And um, her friend was starting a school in Kenya and it was just beginning. And she kind of outlined what they needed to start the school. And I made a gift, right? And that was from her asking my sister to just send it to her network. Um, so if you're brand new to fundraising, if you have never fundraised before, that's really where you're going to start. You're going to start by asking your network of friends, families, coworkers to send it to their network, to share your story. I think that always, I think that's why having the key messaging is so helpful of having that consolidated, right? Like what do you do and what you're trying to accomplish? Because that can help other people also articulate what you're trying to do, what you're trying to raise money for, right? So um, yeah, so I would definitely recommend um, asking your network of supporters to send out an email, provide them an email template, or just send them an email and ask them to forward that on to um, their network. Um, I've changed the donation page with more details, but it doesn't seem to appear on the public side of the website. Oh, okay. It looks like you figure that out. Um, okay, I don't see... Any more questions coming through? Um, okay, so we can end there. Um, if there's any other follow-up questions, um, I'm going to just put our support email address. Um, if there's any technical questions that come up, reach out to support. Um, we are, they're real people answering those emails, not chatbots. So... Um, we'll try to get them as quick as possible, but um, please, you know, reach out to us if you have any issues, if you have any questions, we are here to support you guys for, you know, the most important giving season of the year. Um, and I hope this was helpful. If you need anything, just let us know. I appreciate everyone's time and uh, I hope you have a great Giving Tuesday.